Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Vanderlele. Uh, I'm a professor in the computer programming and analysis program. Um, so we've got uh, three programs that we're going to talk to you about today. Uh, the first two, uh, computer programming and computer programming and analysis. Uh, and then Jim's going to take over to talk about computer systems technician. So uh, we're really happy to see you guys here. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please ask away. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to help and answer those questions for you. So the two programs, computer programming and computer programming and analysis, uh, share commonalities in the first two years. So, you know, if you sign up into one program, you can easily transfer uh, to the other, um, you know, with the credits that are transferable between the two. So, you know, if you make a, a decision whether or not you want to come back for the third year uh, and do the analysis portion of computer programming and analysis, uh, you can do that for sure. So our program, computer programming and computer programming and analysis, um, they teach you the fundamentals, the building blocks of creating computer applications. Uh, so we have two main streams. We take um, foundational programming skills um, as well. We provide a decent uh, foundation in database skills too, uh, which is something that a lot of programs tend to overlook. Um, the, you know, databases are a really important part of today's computer applications. Uh, so on this slide, you see our admission requirements. Uh, you need grade 12 English and uh, grade 11 or grade 12 math. Um, also, if you have taken you know, in high school or in previous education, any uh, computer programming or uh, IT style courses like information technology or computer science, um, that is an asset, but it's not a requirement. So you don't need to have prior programming experience to come in. Uh, we start straight from scratch, straight from uh, the ground up. So if you're coming in with previous experience, that does help you, obviously, but um, it's not gonna set you behind if you don't have that previous experience. So what we study in our program, uh, we have the programming streams where you learn C-sharp uh, starting in the first term of the first year, we start right away teaching you the C-sharp programming language, which is an object-oriented programming language. Um, you also get uh, foundational JavaScript, so you can uh, create programs that you can run in a browser, or we can create applications that you can run in Windows or um, on various other platforms as well. Uh, you get introductory basic HTML and CSS, which allows you to create websites. Um, and recently, we've also introduced Python into our program, which is a relatively new but uh, uh, computer programming language that is gaining a lot of popularity these days. So you'll learn uh, best practices for crafting PC and mobile device applications. Uh, we start out by creating applications that uh, run on our Windows computers in the labs. Uh, and then as you move up through the terms, you get um, more experience creating uh, mobile applications that you can actually upload uh, you know, to the store and distribute if you so choose. Uh, we also take a deep look at database design and implementation. Uh, we start with really small kind of simple databases. And then by the end, you're working with a big data cluster. So there's a lot of uh, different kinds of applications for using database. And we do modern web development as well. So you can kind of get into a little bit of uh, web design. And eventually, you get a little bit of exposure to all sorts of different streams of uh, potential information technology applications. Uh, thanks. <laughs> So our biggest highlight, I think, is the fact that we uh, really buy deeply into the experiential learning. That means that you're going to be creating, right from the get-go, you're going to be creating applications. Uh, the emphasis is on what you can build and what you can create. So we spend a lot of time in class uh, working collaboratively, working together, uh, you know, that you get to that hands-on application and you know the the professor and the teacher and your classmates are all there to kind of work together and help you learn to do it by doing it. Uh, in term four, you have the opportunity to do a capstone project. Um, the student groups are given projects that actually come from the community. So you have an opportunity to work with real world clients and build uh, an application that is going to be used by these clients. So you get to start at the design phase, talking to the clients, figuring out what they want and what they need. Uh, and you get to go through the whole development life cycle of designing the project, programming the project, interacting with the client, making changes that they want. 
Uh, so you get this big experience to put on your resume where you've already worked your way through um, the whole idea from its conception to uh, you know, realizing it into an application that the clients can use. Uh, then if you uh, are in the three-year program, you get to go to your co-op, which is actually a paid position where you get to work at a job in the industry uh, over the, the summer term. So you would work, typically students do their co-op from May to August. Um, after that point, you would come back for the sixth term and then you would uh, finish up the three-year diploma. Uh, we do curriculum updates year by year. We're always constantly changing it, keeping it up to date. Um, we have panels where, you know, we talk to others in the industry and say, you know, where are things going? What are you using? What are you needing? And we try to tailor our program to what industry and local industry especially is looking for so that graduates coming out of our program have those skills that the local employers want. And I think that that is a really, really valuable uh, part of our program for sure. Um, we have awesome job placement, job satisfaction. Uh, just yesterday, actually, I heard from one of our term six students that uh, he liked his co-op so much and they liked him so much that they've kept him on. So he's been working there through his final term of school. Uh, he just told me yesterday they've offered him a full-time job now. When he graduates, he's gonna walk right into uh, a full-time local IT job in our industry. So it's really great you know, hearing those stories from our students and how they're able to learn the skills from us to get you know, where they wanna be. Uh, let's see, what haven't I talked about on this slide already? I tend to get going and I get ahead of my slides. I do this in class too. <laughs> uh, so let's see, the earlier graduation, I didn't mention this. Um, because the co-op term happens in the summer, uh, your final term, if you were to stay on for uh, the analysis term, would be September to December. So we have students just finishing it up now. Uh, you graduate from the three-year program in December instead of in April. So you've got that four month head start on anyone else, you know, from other schools that are taking a three year diploma and not going to finish until next spring. Uh, you get into the job market earlier. So that's uh, really handy. Um, if you pair that with our January start, you can actually get a three year diploma in two calendar years. Um, I don't know, Jim, if you might want to just jump in, we can move ahead to your section and wait for her to reenter if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. And, uh, and then when Melissa comes back in, um, we can finish up her or she can finish up her slides at that point and if for whatever reason Melissa isn't able to join back in I can read off the end of her slide um, just to cover her off that way so even though I'm not in the CP program uh, the CP program and the computer systems technician program are both together uh, in the school of media uh, we do actually have some crossover with uh, with some of the uh, professors uh, teaching into um, so for example Melissa used to actually teach uh, into uh, the CST program uh, to help us out um, and uh, specifically she did the uh, scripting and automation course so um, now that she's full time in CP um, we do have another professor teaching that but Melissa was fantastic when uh, when she took care of that for us uh, a few years back so. Um, my name is Jim Schinkel. I am the program coordinator and uh, full-time professor for the Computer Systems Technician Program. Uh, we're a two-year uh, diploma program, and uh, you know we're uh, we're a fun program. We have uh, lots of fun in our classes, and uh, the biggest thing that uh, that we're able to offer is we are a program that is designed to be uh, on uh, hands-on. Um, we pride ourselves in the amount of experiential learning that we can bring to the class. And uh, fortunately, uh, as, as bad as COVID has been, uh, we've been fortunate enough to have uh, a lot of our classes actually take place on campus. Um, so obviously we did have to make that pitch online when the, uh, when the college was completely shut down. But uh, when we had the opportunities, we were able to teach in a hybrid format. So we we're quite uh, fortunate in that. And uh, also the fact that our students get that hands-on experience. And uh, so that is one of the things that uh, we really do promote uh, within CST is the fact that uh, you're not getting your hands dirty, but at least you're in the lab and, uh, and you're working with all the equipment that we have in the lab. And um, so I'll get you to uh, move on to the next slide, Kendra, thank you. Um, so as far as uh, admission requirements go, 
Uh, so grade 12 English, um, mathematics, grade 11 or grade 12. And then of course, if you do have um, skills with working with computers, uh, Windows operating system, and of course any of the uh, word processing and uh, Microsoft products, office application software and things such as that, they're all good skills to have. Uh, but of course, you do not have to have any of those requirements. Um, we do very similar to CP. We work from the ground up. Uh, so we start off by working with the fundamentals uh, for computer hardware, operating systems, and, uh, and things such as that. So you really don't need to have a, a large IT subset uh, to come into the CST program. We start you off at the ground and work you up. And uh, some of the things that we do cover within CST, um, students learn to provide support for databases and websites, as well as various other computer hardware and operating systems. Um, virtualization is a very large portion of what we teach within CST, uh, whether it be software, hardware, or networking virtualization. Those are all options that, uh, that are taken care of within CST. Uh, we have a really nice lab uh, in CST. Uh, we have two dedicated high-speed um, access. We have um, one that uh, is directly connected to the internet. So we have an unfettered connection out to the internet. And then we also have another uh, high-speed network um, through the laboratory out through the college network. And that allows us to do a lot of hybrid um, virtualization where we can actually connect into, <laughs> Melissa sending us a little note there, uh, we can actually come out through the college and back into the lab. Uh, so we can set up uh, VPN tunnels and, uh, and we can actually test uh, real world cloud opportunities. <clears throat> so faculty is definitely dedicated to helping students explore new, new technologies and also um, working, with, uh, working with industry advisors. Um, we have a program advisory council that we work with and um, they help us <laughs> build out our courses and um, and actually put uh, put together our uh, our information from year to year. I apologize. I have a few distractions here at home. So, um, anyways, the pack uh, really helps us put together our program so that we can move forward and make sure that uh, we're building out content that's relative to local industries in the Niagara region and beyond. And, uh, and that way we can modify and, uh, and develop our programming to suit the needs of what the businesses are looking for. And, uh, and we actually have one of the largest um, program advisory councils in um, the School of, uh, of Media and, uh, and Technology as well too. So that's something that we're very proud of, that we work very closely with those industry providers. And a lot of them, not only do they provide feedback into the course, uh, but they also do help pick up a lot of our students that uh, once they graduate, they have opportunities to move into jobs uh, right off the bat. We have a very high employment rate out of the program, and we also have a very high um, employer satisfaction um, with the graduates that we have from the CST program. And uh, one of the other components that we have that is very unique um, to a CST style program is the fact that we do have that cloud computing component. Uh, so we do integrate um, private clouds, public cloud, pl public cloud such as AWS. And we actually can create a hybrid cloud using those two platforms and connecting them together. So that's something that we're able to add to our um, program uh, alongside of the standard CST components. So some of the things that you'll learn, you'll learn the computer hardware and software side of things. Uh, so not only workstation, but server hardware, you'll be working with it hands-on, you'll be tearing down computers and uh, as well as uh, setting up servers for their um, operating systems, whether they'll be a virtualized oper operating system uh, or not. Uh, typical oper operating systems that we use. So we start you off with Windows 10, Server 20. 12 and 2016, and we use various flavors of Linux operating systems as well too. And, uh, and we use those both in what we call a bare metal fashion, where you're actually installing the operating system directly onto the workstation or the server, or we use them in a virtualized environment. And we use both um, type one and type two hypervisors, 
and uh, and so you can install those operating systems into the hypervisors and use them virtually as well too. Uh, we have the uh, network routing and switching equipment. Uh, we have firewalls and network security devices. And one of the things that we do uh, is we also set up virtual private networks. Um, as I mentioned before, the hypervisors and virtual machines are a large component of what we do in CST, and that allows us a lot of flexibility um, because we can install pretty much any operating system um, as long as we have the hardware for it, that's not a problem. So we get to play with a lot of different operating systems that way because of the fact that we do use uh, virtualization so heavily. And then as I mentioned before, the cloud computing component, which uh, allows us to take a public cloud, a private cloud, and integrate them into a hybrid cloud and those technologies. And, uh, and that, that's something that uh, I look forward to because we have our, uh, our second year students, uh, and they'll be speaking shortly, but um, coming up in their, uh, in their final term this winter, uh, they will actually be working with all those cloud computing components. And, uh, and we do have a capstone project uh, over the last six weeks where they're actually going to integrate uh, everything that they, they've learned and do that capstone project and build out an entire um, office network um, using cloud computing, both private and public, and integrating them together. So they'll, they'll have a full six week uh, project doing that. And that, that's probably one of the most exciting things uh, in the course, because it's, it's the thing I look forward to the most. And so just a quick little snapshot of, uh, of what one of the racks looks like in the lab. So we have uh, punch down blocks at the top and then we have some uh, various switches that we have. So we just upgraded the lab to 10 gigabit networking. Uh, so we have new CISO switch switches in there that allow us to do that 10 gigabit networking and we're continuing to build that out. Um, we'll be adding more uh, 10 gigabit storage as well too. Uh, we have uh, Cisco access points, Cisco routers, and we also have uh, two sets of servers. And uh, we also have network attached storage on the back of the racks, and, uh, and we have battery backup systems as well too. And the students use these, uh, their hands-on with the racks um, pretty much every week. Uh, they come in, they configure them for the lab, they'll do their labs, work on them, and then tear them back down uh, once they're done. So the students are very hands-on um, with the equipment in the lab and, uh, and pretty much every week. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether it's working on the racks or if it's working on the workstations, uh, the students are always doing labs. Uh, so they're always working and, uh, and, and doing different things um, with the equipment that we have. And so I will turn it over to, uh, to Ty first. He's one of the two students that we have with us. Uh, Ty is in his second year of the CST program and uh, I'll let him speak. Thank you, Jim, for the uh, little introduction there. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanna take this time today to talk about my experience being a computer systems technician student here at Niagara College. Uh, firstly, uh, why I chose Niagara College in the first place. Um, it was just the recommendations through uh, friends and co-employees that talked really highly of Niagara College. Um, I didn't really know, again, there's lots of schools out there, lots of programs, but uh, I chose Niagara College. And um, being a local, local resident, I wanted to choose a school that would uh, be successful in teaching me all the fundamentals in the field of IT. Uh, while, while also having fun doing it, you know, because that's very important is having fun and uh, and learning. So uh, with with especially with small class sizes, uh, I have found my professors, Jim, and uh, all the professors being super helpful when trying to figure out problems and learning uh, problem solving techniques that uh, I can learn inside the classroom and then take it into the world of work. Uh, being a student at Niagara College, um, I got to say that I absolutely love all the support from the Niagara College faculty, staff, and services. Um, as I am a peer tutor as well, uh, Niagara College has built a super easy platform 
for new students to book and learn from one-on-one -on -one study sessions. Um, I know that's helped me a lot, uh, first year, uh, not knowing something, but it's always good to get uh, experience and learn from a student who may be uh, a little bit more knowledgeable than you, you know, and uh, super helpful because they're in the same boat for you. They want to learn, they want to practice their new uh, material, and I think peer tutoring is the best way to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, if uh, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to type it in the chat or uh, give us an email. Uh, I know uh, all my uh, co-students uh, in the program are very friendly, very helpful, and uh, more than happy to talk about uh, our program. Uh, I think uh, I think Jeff is next now, so we can pass it to Jeff. Hi, so everybody can hear me okay? Um, great. Um, so my name is Jeffrey Bentley. I am a second year student here at Niagara College as well in the Computer Systems Technology Program. Um, and the reason I originally chose Niagara College um, was I felt that they provided me the best opportunity to learn, um, that being grade 11 math being the requirement. Um, since I didn't have grade 12 math at the time, um, I felt it was a good opportunity and I felt very accepted and welcomed by that. Um, I think all the professors and all of the staff have provided ample opportunity for us to learn in the classroom and outside of the classroom um, through emails and offering different services and support um, when you're not in the classroom and as well as all of the teachers in the classroom providing you with excellent support. Um, I found that they're the type of teachers who will spend the extra 10 minutes after class to make sure you've learned something, um, even if it takes out of their time or their day. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I think that's been fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say other than that. I think it's a great school. Um, I think the computer systems technology program is awesome. And I think you should definitely join it. Thank you, Ty and Jeff. Uh, yeah, you know, I have to say that that is actually one thing that uh, I had yet to mention is the fact that uh, with CST, we do have small class sizes. Um, which is nice because we do uh, get that chance to get that one-on-one, -on -one, um, I guess, interpersonal relationship that you might not get uh, if you're in a larger class. And uh, and personally for me, I know I love moving around the classroom and interacting with all the students and uh, and getting to know everybody on, on a personal level, um, as well as the fact that, you know what, it just makes it easier when you know everybody's face and, uh, and name and you can, you can just sit there and say, hey, if they have a question, they can come up and talk to you. Um, there, there's, there's, there's no walls between us, which is, uh, which is really nice. Um, as far as uh, career opportunities go, that's uh, one thing that we do have a lot of uh, opportunities for uh, graduates uh, in the career field. Um, so you have the cloud network administrators. Uh, so if you do feel like uh, you like that networking vein of things, um, that is definitely an opportunity that you can take. Communication system administrator or net support specialists, uh, hardware or software technicians. Uh, we do have several students that have gone on to become entrepreneurs and actually open up their own computer stores or computer support. Uh, Moving to that type of industry. Uh, we have a lot of students that go into the help desk support specialist role. And from there, they move on uh, once they determine what they would like to specialize in. Uh, we have the IT consultant or security administrator, and of course, technical sales and uh, support specialists. So these are just some of the roles that uh, that students have graduated, uh, that have graduated from the systems technician program, have moved on to. Um, and there are, of course, many more roles that are out there and available, but uh, these are just some of the ones that, uh, that we have. And then so, you can see we have a lot, long list of different job titles. And, uh, and really, it depends on the field that you want to move into. Um, what we do in CST is we try and give you the, the groundwork or the framework um, so that you can move into a speci specific direction uh, within IT. So we don't specialize, we generalize. And, uh, and that allows you to have the opportunity, have a broad base of knowledge, and then from there, be able to, if you want to continue on with your education and, uh, and you can move on. So for example, if you want to be um, 
a network administrator, you can go on and get your certification to become a network administrator. Uh, a lot of the courses that we have we base off of the um, CompTIA uh, framework. Uh, so after you take the course um, or program, you can actually very quickly move on and get those CompTIA certifications because you will have the groundwork for that. And, uh, and those are the best uh, certifications to start off with. And then from there, you can specialize. So if you want to become a security specialist, you can take the Security Plus course and get your certificate there. Or if you want to be a Linux administrator, you can take the Linux Plus course and continue on with that and get that certification and then move on that way. Same thing with virtualization. Uh, if you really enjoy virtualization, which I know I do, um, we use everything from VMware ESXi, Microsoft Hyper-V, Citrix Zen Server, also known as Citrix Hypervisor now. Uh, we use VirtualBox, and I personally have used a lot of different virtual machines uh, in the past, and, uh, and it gives you a lot of opportunity to do different things um, within the computer field. And if you want to go on with that, you can get your uh, VMware certification. So there are a lot of opportunities. Um, coming out of CST, and it gives you the opportunity to sit there and uh, and customize. Or you can still be a generalized um, technician. So um, you can have your feet in a lot of different pools. Uh, so it really depends on what you want to do and moving past the CST program. And then the next slide, we should have a long list of employers that uh, a lot of these are. Uh, employers who are involved with our program advisory committee and others are ones that uh, our students have just graduated onto um, and find their own careers um, outside of, uh, of what we have done in the CST program. So like I say, <clears throat> there are a lot of different opportunities and we do have a very high um, satisfaction rate with the employers that we have. And we always do try and keep up with our uh, graduate students to find out what are they doing in the future where had they moved on to, and then what feedback they have for us. And that way we can always try and make sure that we can um, stay up to date. And, uh, and not to mention as well too, we have several of our professors who are actually Niagara College graduates who have actually come back and helped with us uh, to fill in those part-time roles. And uh, it's really nice because uh, we have two professors that actually came out of the CST program, and, uh, and we have several that are out of the technology programs here at Niagara College. So uh, it just goes to show you that, uh, that close network uh, that we have, and, uh, and we always try to keep these touch base with our students so we know where they are. Okay, yeah, yeah this, is where, <laughs> this is where I was when we left off. Um, yeah, sorry about that. My modem decided that it needed a break. I guess it's Saturday. <laughs> That's okay. That's why we have cell phones. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was talking about, um, uh, so I think that we have in our slides somewhere um, a list of jobs. I think um, that this is actually duplicate information from the previous slide. Um, one of the slides says, something about like, uh, what, what kind of aptitudes do I need, you know, to, to succeed in computer programming? I um, think there might also be a, you know, people think, that, oh, you gotta be a math whiz, but it's okay. Yeah, maybe I'm still seeing program highlights on my screen. That's okay. Um, you know, technology, we need to send some of gym students over here to fix my modem. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, so you, you don't have to be a good uh, mathematician. Like there is math in our program. Um, you know, you take a statistics course and, and you do need to, you know, pass a couple of math courses, but you don't have to be a math magician. That, that's what they, uh, they say that. Um, what you do need to be is motivated and creative, and you have to be a lifelong learner. Because you know, in an industry like this, things are constantly changing. Um, we, you know, try to keep up, and we are, we're trying to, uh, you know, teach the the most recent kind of cutting edge stuff that we're doing in computer programming. We also, of course, have to build that base of common tenants. But um, 
even once you get through school and once you get out into industry, um, you know, everything that I learned in school is already obsolete. So you have to be able to be that lifelong learner and to be willing to be curious and to be willing to do some research and do some digging and, you know, to be constantly trying to update your skills and learning new things. Um, do you have a passion for it is what I'm asking because, you know, with without that kind of drive to learn more, uh, you know, you're going to have a hard time keeping up in an industry like this that is always changing and evolving and, you know, there's always the next big thing or the next uh, programming language or the next type of technology or the next update to work towards. Um, and, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, I love computers because, I, you know, I like playing games or, you know, I, I, I love hobbies with computers. Um, and I think there's like a certain stereotype of what a computer programmer is like, but, you know, I'm here to tell you that's not always the case. Anybody can be a good computer programmer. Um, you just need that, that drive and that love of learning. And there's all different types of people who make excellent programmers. Uh, we've had musicians come through our program. We've had philosophers, we've had biologists. There are a lot of different kinds of people uh, that all make up like a very diverse crowd in our in our uh, program and anybody can be good at programming if you have like that creative kind of mind and you're the type of person who likes building something or likes tinkering with things um, then you know you might find that you have a really good home in computer programming as well so you know you need to just work on some good uh, problem solving skills I think are the number one need for this program. Uh, could you go to the next one? Um, yep, yeah, and we've we've talked about this stuff already about uh, what we learn in our program. Uh, so I think the next one actually might talk about co-op. Co yeah, here we go. So co-op. Uh, the students that go on co-ops almost always love their co-ops. Um, I've put a list here of all of the different, uh, not all of, some of the most recent co-op experiences that students get jobs with these titles as co-op students. So the beauty of being a co-op student is you're still a student, but now you're making money. You're out there, you're in the industry, you're working for six months, you're getting that experience. Um, so we've had co-op students as computer programmers, as software engineers, as uh, analysts, as uh, repair technicians. There's a little bit of crossover between, you know, some of the stuff that our students do and some of the stuff that you uh, would do in the CST program. Um, so that we've had people like working on the back end stuff. We've had people who are work interactions and web programmers and uh, everything in between. So there's a lot of different uh, types of specialties that you can take once you have a good foundation in computer programming. Uh, and the list on the right are just some of the, the local employers. Uh, a lot of students I know will go to uh, NC Research. A lot of students go to uh, MTO or uh, Niagara Region, like government jobs, which are, you know, kind of cushy and sweet as far as jobs go. Um, and then a lot of students are also going to small startups or, uh, you know, local businesses that are really serving the community. So there's a uh, diversity in types of co-ops that you can do as well. well um, I think there's one more slide about uh, job experiences, but I know a lot of students who go through the co-op end up getting a job at their co-op. Uh, not all, of course, you know, some students decide to go somewhere different or, you know, they want to move out of the region or they want to continue on with schooling. Um, I know every year we end up getting a handful of students that decide to continue their schooling um, and will transfer some of their credits toward a computer science degree. Uh, we do have an agreement with Brock where you can uh, transfer to there. And I believe there's an agreement with McMaster as well, if I'm not mistaken. So if you're interested in you know, studying further beyond um, a college diploma, there's always that option you know, to transfer further into a university degree as well. So you might find, you know, that you really love doing research, or you might find that you really love making user interfaces, or you might find that you really love like just being a backend programmer, or you might find your home as a database administrator. And our program can prepare you for any of those. Uh, so we've got uh, 
Lewis here to talk to us about what it's like to be a student in CPA. Thank you very much, Melissa. Well, Melissa was my, my professor in term one and she, she was very helpful. Well, uh, well, uh, I'm I'm part of the of uh, of the students that come with any background with no background at all. I, I was studying in law school in my country. I'm for, from Lima, Peru, and for someone that has been studying just mostly reading, uh, getting into the math world, uh, I thought it was going to be overwhelming, but not at all. Um, as Melissa said, uh, is very, uh, they make sure that you learn. And that's a good thing about Niagara College and that what I love the most, uh, teachers, profess sorry, professors are uh, available always. Uh, well, in, 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 uh, in the schedules, of, of course, right? <laughs> you don't gonna have to uh, write them at 3 a.m. and they're not gonna answer, but uh, usually they, they are very, very, um, they, they answer very quickly. And if you don't under, understand something, uh, they don't have any problem with making a one-on-one -on -one with you. I have uh, some calls with, with professors, even Melissa too, uh, trying to help me for, with something that I didn't understand. And that's a thing that I appreciate a lot from Niagara College because it's a, an organization that cares for their students. And in my case, uh, I, I have been very supported by all of them. Uh, and the, not only the, the teachers, the professors, but also the students as well. Uh, the peer tutoring service is great. I've met a lot of friends there that are still my friends now in my, in my same program. And uh, they're just a little bit ahead of me. And, uh, but we share the same goal in common, right? And yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very good place. So I, I chose Niagara College basically about that. I, I've heard a, a very good, very good comments uh, from people who studied there that I had the opportunity to know. Uh, but I also search online, mostly at the beginning because I was in another country. <laughs> so uh, getting into an organization that you don't know, uh, I, I, I started with a good reviews and then uh, a lot of uh, information just came and in, in this uh, matter, Derek was awesome. He, he has no problem with sharing information. Uh, and yeah, since that, uh, I, I felt very, I, I, I never felt alone because sometimes it might be scary for coming from a, another country, right? Uh, to a place that you don't know, starting all over again, and studying in a language that is not yours, like me sometimes. Um, but yeah, they don't leave you alone in any circumstance. So that's a great thing. And that's a, the thing that I love the most about Niagara College. So if you are like me, I was like, maybe like some of you in, in, in a year from now, this is gonna be a year that I'm here, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, programming is is for everybody. It, it, you just have, as, as Melissa said, the, the willingness the willingness to to learn, and that's it. That's all you require. You, you're gonna have a very good uh, supportive team here.
Okay, so financial support. Um, this is one that comes up a lot. And this one, you know, might be better answered by, um, you know, your advisors, uh, not necessarily by professors, but uh, when people come to me, I direct them to uh, the scholaries and bursaries, scholarships rather, and bursaries. Um, you know, we have, there's so many scholarships and all of the application processes are a little bit different. But, um, you know, if you need financial support, it is there. We have a lot of scholarships that are, you know, for our program, some that are available to all students, um, you know, some that are available to students because they work at a particular store or because they come from a particular location or, you know, the, all the requirements, um, you know, apply for as many scholarships as you qualify for. Um, the second one, do you need to have a powerful computer? connect to the internet, <laughs> which uh, clearly mine's lacking in. Um, no, you need a reliable internet connection for online study. Um, once we're back in class, you technically don't need to have a computer at all because, you know, we have our computer labs that you can come and use our computers. Um, what we've been doing for online is providing online access to our lab computers. So, you know, once you're a student, you can uh, use a remote connection and just go through the internet to use our on-campus computers. Uh, and I know a lot of students are benefiting from that because they don't have the right kind of computer at home or their computer at home is not powerful enough. Um, for our program, uh, you want to use a Windows 10 computer. Uh, we run through Windows. So, uh, you know, if you have a Mac, you can do most of the things, but sometimes it's a little bit Harry with compatibility issues, but any kind of computer can use the remote access solution. And even if you have like a tablet, you can use the remote access solution through your tablet. Uh, so what kind of computer you have at home doesn't necessarily matter. However, if you want to use your home computer for things like, uh, you know, programming or running your applications, then the recommendation is Windows 10 laptop, 16 gigs of RAM. And down here, the first two years of the two-year and three-year programs are mostly in common. I think there's one or two courses that you might have to pick up if you want to switch from the two to the three-year program, but the vast majority of it is the same. So if you are in computer uh, section, then you can switch over. If you have the opposite, that's true as well. If you're in the three-year program and you decide, you know, I'm ready to get out there, I want to graduate, you can obtain the two-year diploma as well. So yeah, it's very easy to switch. Um, all right, we did have one question, perfect. Once I finish computer programming, uh, I can continue with one more year two computer analysis, question mark? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you can switch from the two-year program to three-year. Um, you'd have to talk to an academic advisor just to get them uh, to do the paperwork and to let you know uh, the requirements, if there are any additional additional requirements that you haven't met yet, uh, you might have to pick up an extra course or two. But uh, aside from that, it's a fairly easy switch. Students do it all the time. Uh, so the the third year, you know, after the first two years are done, um, you would take the co-op in the summer term, and then from September to December, you have the sixth term. Which after that, you're all set. Then you have your three year diploma. How does the elective courses work? So our elective courses, um, you are allowed to take them kind of in whatever is offered. They can be anything from a general interest course. So I actually had someone take a rock star like course. It was all about the, the different rock stars that had happened. It was like an elective course that they chose. Um, or if you want to take something in an area of interest you already have, you're able to do so as long as it's offered, but you get to select that. I had students taking uh, Mandarin, I believe it was last term. A bunch of my students were taking that elective course in uh, learning introductory Mandarin Chinese. Yeah, it's so whatever's offered currently at the time. Mandarin, maybe we can all learn to speak Mandarin together. Um, all right. What did you guys take as your electives? I'm curious. I took Spanish courses as my electives when I was studying at Niagara College. <laughs> Jeff, Ty, what do you guys take for electives right now? Um, so I don't actually have any electives right now. I've decided to take them in my last semester. Um, so I'm probably going to take a music elective since I enjoy music and I do music production on my own time. Um, and other than that, I'm not really sure what I'm going to take as my other elective, but time will tell. 
So I was actually fortunate enough to, uh, when I switched from Brock to Niagara, uh, I already took all the elective courses, even though I would love to take more elective courses at Niagara College, but um, obviously I didn't have to take them. So yeah. Well, I come from law school, so psychology was one of the things that we study there. So I thought, yeah, why not? It's, it's, it's very interesting for me. So I took mostly psychology courses. All right, I'm going to end the session. Thank you all again. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your weekend.